We are uh, going to install a new router and the installation process is usually the same on all routers. But uh, our example router is called a Netgear N600 Wireless Dual Band Gigabit Router WNDR3700. It comes with an installation CD where you also have a PDF file with uh, instructions. So if you are changing from an old to a new router, I suggest you print out that manual because if something goes wrong, you might not have an internet connection available to troubleshoot. After you put in your CD, you're most likely going to see the autoplay window. If not, go in on uh, Start Computer and run it from here. I am uh, going to assume that the autoplay worked, so uh, click Run Auto Run Exa. The good thing here is that you might be able to choose your own language. I'm located in uh, Norway, so I get all the European languages. But for the sake of this tutorial, we will uh, choose English. What we want now is the setup. You might get a warning to uh, let Netgear continue. If you do, just click yes. This is uh, the window that appears. Now if you have a personal firewall or antivirus application installed, you're going to have to maybe give Netgear permission to continue. If you still have problems, you might have to uh, disable that antivirus application while you're doing the installation. And that the router connects to broadband, DSL or cable modems only. Let's click next. Now, if you follow the instructions for your router, depending on which router it is, it might be a little different. But what I usually do is um, this. I have unplugged my modem. I have completely removed all cables from my old router. The new router is not plugged into anything. That way, I can get the correct instructions. So what this window is actually telling me to do is the following. Cable my modem to my router. Cable my router to the computer. Then power up the modem. The lights might become blue or green, depending on what modem you have, but wait until all the lights uh, appear. Then power up the router. Since this is a Netgear router, the lights will uh, become green. And then click Next. And we are now connected to the internet. So let's uh, click next and start the router setup. Okay, let's uh, stop for a second. This is where you give your router a name. Now you can call it what you want, but put some thought into it. And remember, this is a name and not, not a password. Now, if you don't call it anything, it's automatically going to be called Netgear. And uh, having the brand name as your router name is uh, an indication that you're not computer savvy. And anyone looking for a wireless network to hack, a brand name is um, like a red flag. And the name you choose, uh, it's not going to be your first name or your last name or your address or anything that gives any identification of who you are, understand? So you have 32 characters and it's case sensitive. Now because this is a, a dual band router, I have two names here, one for the 5 gigahertz and one for the 2.4 gigahertz. Wireless security. This is important. 
you have a few options here. None not recommended. It means other people can hook up to your router and surf the internet. WEP64 weak, WEP128 strong. No, it's not strong. WEP can be hacked within minutes and if someone wants to use a few hours, so what? They're still able to get in on your network. It doesn't really matter how complicated you make that passphrase. This is a no-go. WPA, we're not going to go into the details. It used to be very difficult to hack before. In 2013, that's not really the case anymore. So if you can avoid it, please do. What you want, and there is really no exception to this, you want WPA2. You understand? WPA2. The passphrase. When someone wants to hack into your router, this is what they're after, the passphrase. So make it complicated. There are programs online that can generate a solid passphrase for you if you feel unsecure. And the passphrase you choose should be unique. So don't use a password that you use on Facebook or Google or anything like that. So think very carefully what you use here. Product registration. I think this goes for all router brands. If you want telephone support, you need to register your product. And if you're not really that computer savvy, that telephone support might be important one day. I'm not sure about guarantee issues. There is only one other thing I want to mention on uh, this page here. Do you wish to be part of the Netgear product feedback program? Most likely you are going to be tracked anonymously. Now to be on the cautious side, I just want to make you aware that Netgear is um, an American company, the router is made in China, and the world headlines in the media in 2013 has revolved around companies giving information to somebody. So you decide. This is your uh, congratulations page for uh, finishing your installation. Now there are a few things we need to address here. Router admin configuration interface. This address is what you need when you go in and start configuring on your own router, meaning changing things around a little bit. And as a Netgear router, I also believe you can in the URL put 192.168.1.1. Router admin login name and default router admin password is admin and password. This is not unique to your router. This is the default settings for Netgear routers and other router brands have different defaults. They are easily googled. These settings have to be changed and they should be changed immediately. So you're going to need that configuration interface. We are going to change uh, the login name and the password in a different tutorial. But leaving the defaults is almost the same as uh, having Netgear as the name of your router. So if somebody at one point in time is uh, able to uh, hack or guess your passphrase, they'll be able to surf the internet. But the next thing coming is your login name and password and sooner or later they'll be not just surfing the internet but in on your computer. So be careful. But for now I um, hope this installation tutorial helped out a little bit.